scripture for today is John 2, 3, 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. Wait a minute. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because, because, their, devil, e oh. because their deeds were evil. <laughs> Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. you no not you my daddy YouTube taught me All right, you guys. <laughs> let's start with prayer dear father in heaven we do thank you so much for the wonderful love mercy and grace that you gave us when we deserved exactly the opposite Lord may we see the verdict is out that Jesus Christ was the Messiah he is the Messiah he is the light of this world and he has called us those who believe to serve Him, to be a light to this world, to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. And I thank You, Lord, that we can come together as a body, the church of Jesus Christ, Lord. And I pray that we will be empowered by Your Spirit to live a life of worth. We come today to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and to praise You, O Father in Heaven, for all that You've done for us. We just thank You and praise You that Your words are true and that you will bring us back to a right relationship with you for all eternity if we trust in your Son. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Jacob's going to pass out to all the kids these little Easter eggs. and It's a tomb with an Easter egg. It says, He has risen. And notice, once you take this out and wear this cross, it's an empty tomb because our Savior lives and this can be a reminder. So we've got enough for every kid. And it glows in the dark. And it glows in the dark. So the light shines. We gave them out in the Easter baskets. I showed you that. Um, we do have, I think, 11 boxes left now. If you have a home for them, please remember that afterwards. And we'll put a ham and eggs and pie in it and send you with a basket that you can let your light shine before others by doing your good works. If not, we'll put them up. But in there also, I have more eggs if, if you have other children that you want to get and we don't go out in the boxes. And we have some of the hippity hoppity balloons, uh, hippity hoppity Jesus is alive, or whatever it says. And then we have some coloring books. Now, besides that, we have tons of food left downstairs. So please stay around afterwards, get a to go container, take you some food home so that it won't be wasted because I don't like wasting food. Um, you probably don't either. So while J Jacob is handing those out, I've got some statistics for you. Do you like statistics? I like statistics. They're fun, fun facts. In 2006, this is actual statistic data, 8 in 10 or 80% of people on the earth celebrated Easter in one form or the other. Now I did not say they celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I said they celebrate Easter. If you look at Easter and Google it and hit images on the first page when you scroll down, I do not think you will get a picture of Jesus. You'll get tons of pictures of the Easter Bunny. 
If you type message, Easter message into it, you'll get the Easter bunny with some, with some thoughts and messages again. But you won't, probably won't find Jesus. So I challenge you today to tell someone what today is. Why you believe, why you have the hope that Jesus Christ died for our sins and it was finished. Our sins were forgiven, it's cast as far as the east is from the west, that we are viewed in the robe of righteousness of Jesus Christ. But then, on Sunday, He rose again. We have no doubt, we have no fear whatsoever that He will do exactly what He says, that He will come back to us and take us home with an eternal life, never to be separated from God. Here's some other statistics. $17.3 billion, billion, not million, was spent in the United States in 2016 on Easter. 18.2 is what they estimate for this year. The average person spent $146 for Easter per person. Maybe you don't see that, but you'll see some statistics that show that in just a minute. It's uh, supposed to be $150 per person this year. Okay? Because that counts Easter candy, Easter dresses, and, and suits, and hats, and everything. 25 to 34 year olds spent the most money, period, by far of any age group. Now, if you think about that, they have children and things. But there is people... There are people out there celebrating Easter that may not know that it's the day that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. I mean, we can celebrate all we want to and everything for the wrong reasons and be joyfully wrong. And the Bible's clear of that. $7.9 billion is spent on food and candy. What's the number one non-chocolate candy? Who knows? Nope. Peeps! Peeps. Yeah, and if you have them in the cupboard 20 years from now, they'll still look the same nasty way. Peeps are, they'll last, okay? In Germany, 200 million chocolate bunnies were sold, and I assume consumed, in 2016. 17.7 million chocolate eggs were eaten in Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> the largest chocolate Easter egg weighs, or weighed, I don't know if it's still in existence or not, 15,873 pounds. To put that into perspective, that's a full-grown male elephant. Okay? Now I've got one more statistic for you, and then we'll get into our Bible verses. It is a 100% fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. You weren't there, you don't know it, but it's a 100% fact. You can know it, you just have to believe. And if you believe, it is a 100% fact that when you die, or Jesus comes back first, you will spend eternity with God in heaven. Period. <clears throat> if you came to the sunrise service, I asked why you came today, why you're here today. And do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life? And I read John 14, 1 through 7, and I want to read that again. We read some of it this morning. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If there were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way where I am going. Now notice next, one of his disciples, one of the twelve says, We don't know. That's all right. If you don't know, seek Him. He will reveal Himself to you. He is a father longing for his child to come to him. So in verse 5 we read, No, we don't, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. 
So if you believe that and you believe in eternal glory, if you believe in a home that you will go to eternally, that is everything perfect. This is a pretty good world, even though it's a fallen world and there are a lot of tragedies in it. But there will be no more sin, no more tears, no more death. None of that. No more sin when we get to glory. And in Romans 8, 29-32, we read, For God knew His people in advance, and He chose them to be like His Son. Are you living that way? So that His Son would be the firstborn among many brethren, many brothers and sisters. And have, having chosen them, He called them to come to Him. And having called them, He gave them right standing with Himself. And having given them right standing, He gave them His glory. You ever thought about that? You have the glory of God through Jesus Christ. And when you get to heaven, you will be fully glorified. You will be transformed into the likeness and image of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. <clears throat> so what shall we say then, verse 31, about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, then who can ever be against us? Since He did not spare even His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, won't He also give us everything else? I also read from Romans 10, verses 1 through 10. And my point for reading that was our responsibility to be like Christ, to worship God and to tell others about Jesus Christ. And Paul writes in Romans 10, the first 10 verses, Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my heart. My heart is a pastor, a heart given to me from Christ. The longing of my heart and my prayer to God is for the people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiasm they have for God, but it is misdirected zeal. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with Himself. Refusing to accept God's way, they cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in Him are made right with God. Nothing else required. It's been done. Verse 5, For Moses writes that the law's way of making a, man, a person right with God requires obedience to all its commands. And that's something we can't do. But faith's way of getting right with God says this, Don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven because we cannot obtain it. And don't say who will go down to the place of the dead. In fact, in Deuteronomy it says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, what we're celebrating today, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by confessing with your mouth that you're saved. And we looked at Matthew 28, and we started reading, we read the first few verses, and I want to continue on with it and tell you the rest of that little section of story there. I'm reading from the NLT. It says in verse 1 of Matthew 28, Early on Sunday morning as a new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary um, went out to visit the tomb. <coughs> Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. Kim's girl sang about that this morning. An angel from heaven came down, and there was a great earthquake. And I said that this morning. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when Jesus comes back with a legion of angels to take His church? One angel, and there was a great earthquake. And we read in the other accounts, and I challenge you to go read the other accounts today, that there were more angels. Some suddenly appeared at the tomb, two more, so there's probably three there. But here it says there was a great earthquake when one angel came down out of heaven. He sat on the stone, and verse 3 says, His face shone like lightning, and His clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw Him, and they fell into dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the, to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead just as He said would happen. Come and see where the body was laying because it's not there anymore. And my point was in the Scripture that was there is there's two individuals. There were those who knew Jesus intimately and there were those who did not. 
at the tomb. And the angels came, and the guards, the buff Roman soldiers that had conquered the world, that had been set there to guard this tomb, as the King James says, were like dead men. They literally passed out, and the women, he said, don't be afraid. Because see, the difference is, the guards versus the women, they didn't know and weren't longing to see Jesus. Even though they thought they were going to come find a body, which they didn't, they came to anoint Him with spices and everything, because their hope was, was crashed. Jesus had been crucified, but they still had faith. They still had longing to come see Jesus. And then you had the Roman soldiers who did not. But the angel spoke to the women and said, Don't be afraid. Now let's read on and see what it has to say. <clears throat> Find my verse. What verse was I on? Six, right? Yep. Okay, got it. And now, now what? Go quickly and tell. Kind of sounds like the Great Commission, don't you? Do you know what the Great Commission is? Talk a little bit more about it next week. So if you don't, be prepared to know. You should know. Go quickly and tell His disciples that He has risen from the dead. And He is going ahead of them to Galilee. You will see Him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They had urgency. They were excited. Could this be true? I know Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. I saw all these many miracles, but he was killed. The Romans, these same soldiers that lay on the ground as dead men now, they're the ones that crucified our Lord. But yet, this angel that shook the world when he came down out of heaven said, Don't be afraid. Instead, I've got a mission for you. Go and tell everyone that. He has risen. There's an empty tomb. Sorry about that. <laughs> so they ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened, yeah, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. Verse 9, And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. He said He'd never leave you and never forsake you. He came from heaven to earth to be with you. Why would He not want to walk with you through your life once you get saved? Don't forget that. He's right there. That's why He said, Father, please send the Spirit. Send the Counselor. Send the, the one who is pleading your case here also inside of you that you are signed, sealed, a child of God and nothing can take that away from you. And they ran to Jesus, grasped His feet and worshipped Him. Remember what we talked about, I guess it was last week, about Mary falling at the feet of Jesus and worshiping Him? Now, this was a different Mary. That was Mary, the uh, brother of Lazarus. This is Mary Magdalene, unless you think they're the same. Some people do. I don't. But, hey, it doesn't matter what you think. What matters is that you fall at the feet of Jesus and worship Him. Because, see, it's fine to say, I want to be saved, but that's probably not going to get you in. If you say, oh, God, thank you for what you've done through Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord, <laughs> you're going in, trust me. You don't have to worry about the riches of this world because the streets are paved with gold there. <laughs> gold is precious and priceless here, but that's asphalt in heaven. You know, it's nothing compared to the riches that Jesus is preparing for you. And if He died and laid down His life, if God sent His only Son, then you can have eternal security with no doubt whatsoever that when you pass from this life to the next, you're just passing to glorification for eternity. Then Jesus said to them, verse 10, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers. The mission is the same. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of this world. I am with you. I won't forsake you. Go and tell that I am risen. Go tell of this foolishness of the cross. 
Because it is the power of God that is saving you. Don't worry about men's wisdom. Don't worry about riches. Worry about the fact that you have been bought back from death unto life. That's why Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, therefore I live. And that's why Jesus said that I have come to give you life, an abundant life. Verse 11 says, As the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priest what had happened. So now these dead men get up and go do the same thing again. They, they, they saw angels that, that frightened them almost to death, and they still don't want to believe because they don't want to change their heart. The verdict is out. Light has come into the world, but they love their sins and evil deeds more than they want to come to the light. Oh, I don't do that, Pastor. I don't, I don't, I've got rid of all those sins. Have you still come to Jesus' feet and worshipped Him? Then you haven't got rid of those sins at all because you are still up on the throne instead of Jesus. Don't forget that. He should be Lord of your life and He deserves nothing less. Verse 12 says, A meeting with the elders was called. So not only did they go to the priests, but the elders. <laughs> the elders of the priests. And they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. We can't have this story about Jesus being told. We've got to do everything we can to destroy this story. But it's still alive and well 2,000 years later. But as we walk and talk and live like Jesus, it can come alive even more. God promises that our, His Word will not go out void. But are people going to hear it if we're afraid to proclaim it? Don't be afraid. Go and tell. Verse 13, they told the soldiers, you must say, not you should say, you must say, Jesus' disciples came during the night while we were sleeping and they stole the body. If the governor hears about it, we'll stand up for you so you won't get in trouble. Worry about the things of this world, what's wise in the world's eyes. I won't get in trouble. I can go on living like I am. I can, I can have my penthouse, whatever it is. I can have my status. Because I don't want it to cost me those things to follow Jesus. But Jesus was clear about that also. If you don't deny yourself take up your cross and follow after Him. Then He says later in Luke that you're not worthy to be My disciple. Verse 15, So the guards accepted the bribe and said what they were told to say. Their story spread widely among the Jews and they still tell it today. But it didn't stop the light, did it? It didn't stop the way and the truth. Jesus Christ lives. There's an empty tomb that declares it. You are a declaration of a living, breathing Jesus Christ because of a changed life that you have. In Matthew 7, 21 through 27, this is part of Jesus' first teaching. You're familiar with it. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Put that with John 3, 16. Put that with Romans 9, 10, 9 and 10. Do you do that? Put that with Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are you saved. Only the one who does the will of my Father. Because as James says, show me your faith without your deeds. I, I, I can't say that you can. Verse 22. Men, many, many, not some, many will say to me, on that day, so you can count that that day is coming. Lord, Lord, did we not, and you plug in whatever you want there, did I not do this, did I not do that, did I not do these mighty works and miracles in your name, did I not cast out demons as it says. But if you don't have a right relationship with God through Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you might be part of those many. Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Therefore, as a result of that, everyone, underline that in your Bible, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, there's the thing, once you've heard, you do. Go and tell. Those who put them into practice is like a wise man. We're back to 1 Corinthians again. Wisdom or foolishness, whichever one you want to say. 
Like a wise man who built his house on the rock, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had a foundation. We just finished 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And it says you can lay anything you want to on top of that building of the foundation of Jesus Christ. Your works may stand up to the fires and see what, what is really good and what's bad since you guys are arguing about which way is right, which one of you has tongues and doesn't have tongues and so forth. But the foundation is what salvation is built upon. And that's Jesus Christ. Verse 26, But everyone, underline everyone again, and there's that but, which is a complete opposite, who hears these words of mine, exactly the same thing, but does not put them into practice. So both people have heard, but one does go and tell. Or go and tell. Those who do the words of mine, put them into pr practice, or the ones that don't now, are like a foolish man. First Corinthians all over again who built his house on the sand, the rains came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Today is the day that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 100% positively true, whether you believe it or not, raised from the dead. And the reason that He did that was to give you abundant life now and forevermore. But you have to decide if if you want to declare His name and live that way, or you don't. Tell someone today, grab an Easter egg, grab a hippity hoppy balloon, whatever you want to do, and tell someone that Jesus is risen. Father in heaven, we thank You and praise You for this day that we can come and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank You and praise You for Your words that stand the test of time. We thank You that that... that, that message of foolishness that was wise of the world that the, that the Roman soldiers and the priests and the elders declared that someone stole, the disciples stole Jesus' body has never ever outshone the light. Your word tells us that the light will shine into the darkness. And help us be the light to the world that you have called us to be. We thank you and praise you. We thank you for this opportunity to freely worship you. And with this opportunity you've given us, may we speak your word boldly so that others will hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.